Hallelujah. We're doing everything that we're bringing in. God, giving it up to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We open our hearts to God to receive Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. church. I don't know about for you guys, but I know throughout my whole life, he's the one that's going to make, to make the way for my life, and um, even when I didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to try this new song today, and uh, help me out. If you, if you know it and have heard it, it's pretty easy to catch on to. Promise. 
up this morning on uh, this Facebook. I'm so green and, uh, with the technology, but there's a, there is an opportunity to reach people that wouldn't be in the house and with uh, what our country's been going through with the COVID and whatever's happening out there. Gives us an opportunity to share the gospel with some that might not be in the house. Need to pray for our country. Like I said yesterday, I, I probably have never been involved in a community activity that touched my heart any more uh, than yesterday. It was just awesome. And we had two hours and uh, everyone was just, I believe, in one accord, like the Bible talks about. And there was exhortation, there was scripture, there was singing. Uh, there was lifting of hearts and hands and prayer. And uh, God called us to be a people of prayer. Amen. Amen. And uh, you need something in your life. All you have to do is reach out to the Lord and call upon his name. Now, I would be the first to tell you a lot of people want to treat God like Santa Claus. Uh, you kind of once a year or pull something out of the bag. Uh, there's a glorious life that we can live in Christ every day. Doesn't mean any of us are perfect, but every day we can trust Him and His grace. I have a couple of guests in the house today. Kelly has a friend today and a lady and sister in Christ moved from the Tulsa area. Their son have a business. Uh, Going to have vegetables 
even in the winter. So lift your hands, sis, wave at me, be at home. And uh, I think maybe we got some cups delivered. Amen. And uh, your home folk and enjoy singing the songs of Zion and the preaching of God's word. And we're going to do that. Have you ever tried to help someone and just seemingly you couldn't help them? Maybe try to invest in their life or encourage them. Problems in living, problems in life. And, and you tried to make a difference and it just seemed like they returned to their folly or uh, you try to lift them up, you try to pull them out. And uh, it, I, I guess it's kind of like the old adage, uh, if a person don't help themselves, they can't be helped. I'll tell you where it becomes a liability when you're doing more to help them than they're trying to do to help themselves. Right. And, uh, but nonetheless, we will make an effort and uh, we'll, we'll try to make interventions. And sometimes we just have to uh, pray for them and maybe walk on down the road. But you know, God, I, I think about how much he loves us. And he gave us the best of heaven when Christ came to die on the cross. And, and that we might know him in the free and full pardon of our sin when he shed his blood on Calvary. And, and Christ, Jesus, is our high priest. And he's there making intercession for us. And he loves us in spite of ourselves. You see, here's the thing about it. As a human, we'll plan to turn over a new leaf and we'll plan someday to do something. It's like that person you try to help. You, and they'll say, someday I'm going to get it right. But someday may be their last day. And if we don't get it right for Christ today, we may never get it right. Can I hear a weak amen in the house? Amen. And, uh, but still, the Lord invested all of heaven for you and I that we might know him. And uh, I think about Israel, how God would uh, deliver them from bondage. Uh, God would feed them. God would bless them. He would deliver them from idol gods. And uh, it was like they would just return to their folly. Is there anybody in the house that understands that human condition? But our God is a faithful God, even as we sang about today. And uh, I, I don't believe the Lord can help someone who wouldn't help themselves he said call upon me and i will answer jesus said come learn of me and uh, the doors open really the message on my heart that i want to talk to you about we're right here uh in the beginning of fall the seasons change and uh i really love springtime uh, I love the excitement of seeing the trees come back to life. Uh, we get a witness that the season is changing and things begin to bud, things begin to bloom. And uh, it is an exciting time. But just as sure as that happens, there comes a moment that the season, excuse me, is going to change. And now... We're seeing those very leaves that shot forth in new life. Freshness, green, exciting. They are beginning to fade, right? With the change of the season. But I remember just seemingly a few days ago when I was so, I'm not a winter person. Do I have one witness in the house? Uh, I am a spring and fall person, and I, I would pray we would have a long Indian summer. Do I have another witness in the house? But anyway, we take, God gave us all seasons of life. And you know, you can really see the gospel. Do you know that? You can see people in the springtime of their life. Then when life gets heavy, you see the heat of the summer come on. And, and, and then as, as life passes, uh, people, uh, I'm somewhere in fall and winter, somewhere I'm in there. But you know, things begin to change and they give witness. I wanna to talk to you about renewal and revival today. I wanna to talk to you about what God has done in our life and what he has ever done in your life, he can do it again. 
if he's ever forgiven, if he's ever healed, if he's ever blessed, if he's ever touched, if he's ever been fresh in your life and this morning you don't feel as fresh in God, all you have to do is extend your hand and your heart and friend, you can be at the springtime of life. How many of you remember when you were first born again, you first came to Christ and you were just so excited about God's love for you and, and your love for him and you just wanted to tell the the whole world and friend you were blooming in your spiritual life and you were fresh and, and and you felt that revival and you felt that new joy of the of an experience in Christ that unless a person knows about you really can't tell them it, right you tell them about God, but until they know Christ in their heart for themselves, it's hard to explain what they see in your life, that joy. I was reading this morning and, and, and up early and just meditating on God and anticipating being with you and in our Father's house today. And, and I was thinking about the book of Revelation where uh, the Jesus walked through the churches and found them in, in differing spiritual conditions and he would give them the word that they needed just appropriate for your life. I wonder today, are you as excited as you once were in Christ? Are you as fresh that when you were first born again, do you know him in the joy and the excitement of every day living for Christ? I kind of chuckled to myself and I didn't get to pull this on Diane. Most of the time, she doesn't get warnings when, when I pull a witness on her, but she will witness this. And friend, I, I, I know I have a calling on my life. I, I love the Lord and the ministry has been my life and you know that. But uh, I'll go in, my, my wife said, do you know everybody in Pittsburgh? I said, no, but I know people uh, that knows the rest of them. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go in the store and, and my wife loves all of you, but she'll get so frustrated uh, because every aisle, you know what it is, you stop and you talk and you visit and she's trying to shop. But I do have another phenomenon of that that happens in my life. Brother Calvin, I'll go in Walmart or one of the stores and somebody I haven't seen, maybe at church for a long time. Now I haven't brought it up. I haven't said anything and I get in their presence and stuff just starts gushing out. Oh, I'm gonna be at church here real soon. <laughs> I didn't ask them anything about church. Maybe because they think I represent the Lord in some fashion. And you know, when I get over this mess, I'm going to be back in the house of God. Do I have a witness in the house? If I ever get through this again, I'm never going to cool off in Jesus. If I can get up over the, if the Lord will just give me another opportunity, Pastor, I won't miss another Sunday. And when they leave and my wife and I walk on, I say, I didn't say a thing. Did you say anything? I didn't say nothing. <laughs> now I'm messing with you a little bit on purpose. Isn't that like we are? We'll take those, oh, I feel a witness of the Lord's Spirit. We'll, we'll take those moments and our heart will be bumped and, and, and we want to do right and we want to do better and we want to push in and, and we'll say that someday it's going to be different. Hey, today is the day of salvation. This is the moment to press into the heart of, of God. And you know what Jesus told the church of Asia? He said, remember from whence thou hast fallen, repent and do your first works over. Friend, if America has ever been in a day, she needs to repent and find God like she once knew her. Come on, somebody shout me down now. If the church world has ever been, I'm talking general church world, if we've ever been in a place that it would be time and high time to arise, shake ourselves, stir ourselves, and like Samson prayed, God, do it again. God, do it again. Touch me one more time. God, renew me and refresh me by your Holy Spirit. God, just do a work in me. How many of you would agree this would be a great time for that to happen? And sometimes I think how it could hurt the heart of God 
where he loves us so much and then we'll turn to our own folly. But yet down in our being, we know he's a merciful, faithful God. I've always known in my life, on my best day and my worst day, when I wasn't serving God knowing I ought to be serving God, Sister Treva, I, I always knew all I had to do was slide in an altar of prayer somewhere. And Brother Tom, I've never had him say, I have no time for you. Now we'll tell God, whether by verbalizing or action, Brother Larry, we'll let, know, we'll let God know we don't have the time for him. But friend, how many of you know freshness in our life comes from our effort too. I'm going to say that one more time. How many of you know freshness comes by our effort too? You know, we say, God, come on the scene. Come to America. And, and really, America's not waiting on God. God's waiting on America. The church isn't waiting on God. God's waiting on the church. Friend, you're not waiting on the Lord. My Bible says, draw nigh unto God and He'll draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil and he shall, he shall flee from you. We can lift holy hands and we can say, God, I'm going to press it. Now, i got to slow down. I don't want our guests leaving and say, you know that guy exhorted he thought he did some preaching. He didn't even read the Bible. Hey, I read the Bible. Because you know, it really doesn't matter what I say if it's not God's holy word. Amen. Amen. Oh, it makes me want to cry. It makes me want to weep for that freshness. I felt some of that freshness yesterday as the body of Christ gathered together. See, I was torn. I wanted to be watching what was going on in Washington, but I knew it was important what was going on in Washington, a return to God, a march on our nation's capital to, to be a witness to the Lord, maybe a, a repenting and doing our first works over as a people, but I knew it was vital also for the local church to gather together, make an effort, call on the name of the Lord, I'm going to call your attention, and we're going to be going to Psalms 85, but at first, I want to go to Lamentations, the fifth chapter, Brother Tommy. If you could give us Lamentations, you, uh, Facebook, I hope you have your Bibles, and uh, we want to look at Lamentations 5 and 21, and we, we want to hear the heart of God. We want to hear the scripture this morning. And I might just back up to 19, Brother Tommy. Sorry about that, brother. He hadn't had the good fortune of me giving him all of my scriptures. We may just go ahead and finish that chapter. Thou, O Lord, remain us forever. How many of you know God's a God that never changes? We can change. In other words, we don't have to be a sinner forever. We can become a saint in God. We can become his child. We can know the Lord. Amen. And our old life can fall away. And in Christ, we can be like that new springtime, fresh and budding and full of joy and love and peace. Here, the prophet says, Lord, you remain forever. Isn't it wonderful to know that God is there and he's full and he's complete and he's perfect and he's always the same. And Brother David, we can call upon his name. Yeah. What a comfort. It said thy throne is from generation to generation. You know, if sin and hell can run in your family, how I many of you want me to get a little bit honest today? You know, John the Baptist, when they came out to his preaching, he said, who hath warned you vipers? He's, you know what he called them? Excuse me. Let me put it down in street language. He said, who hath warned you to flee the wrath of God, you generation of snakes? Now, you didn't know I knew this, but if you'll read the root and the original of that, you know what he actually told them generationally? 
He said, your dad was a snake, your mother was a snake, their dad and their mother was snakes, and snakes run in your family. Did you know that actually? He said, who hath warned you to flee the wrath to come, the generation of vipers? In other words, they were a people uh, not complete spiritually. They didn't know Christ. They didn't know a relationship with Him. They didn't understand anything about revival or renewal. How many of you know if you renew something, it had to have been there before? How many of you know if the church prays for revival, it's because, Sister Carolyn, we understand we've been in revival. You know what our young people need in America today? They need to see mom and dad, grandma and grandpa in a freshness and a revival with the Lord and the Spirit of God one more time move in the house of God in demonstration and manifestation they say well they used to tell us about it but this is him Amen. Amen. and I defy anyone to say America wasn't found, founded as a Christian nation that is baloney and it's worse than that it's an abomination we were founded on godly Christian principles. We have backslid as a nation, and that's why we ought to repent. Hey, just send me home. Now look at it. He said, Wherefore dost thou forget us forever? How many of you are glad God's a covenant God? How many of you know God said, I inscribed you in the palm of my hand? How many of you know if God said, if I could ever forget you, my tongue would cleave to the roof of my mouth? How many of you know God's still in covenant with Israel today? This reformed theology is not going to work unless you rip the book of Romans plumb out of the Bible. But we too, the Gentile people, that other flock that the Lord came to is you and I today. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. You were a heathen, but thank God by His grace, we become born again of His Spirit. And He is forever, and He is the same. He doesn't change, but friend, we're subject to change like the weather. You ever met people in your life, maybe a spiritual mentor, maybe your mom, dad, grandma, who spiritually, Brother Jim, they were just always, I've had people that I knew of the Lord, I just loved them so much, many of them's in heaven, that forever helped to change my life. They were just steady and stable, always the same. Anybody ever met some? Then we meet some, we're kind of like the mama's old sewing machine. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just up, down, up, down, up, down. I believe there is a place that, that we can become level in the Lord, not stale in Him. Now, He, look, look at the question that's being asked. Will you forget us forever? You, you know, the rhetorical question that, you know, the thing about a rhetorical question, I know you didn't know, I know this either. But rhetorical question, really, the professor will tell us, it's really not for information. It's really telling us this is the answer. No, God won't forgive us, forget us forever. No, God will never change. He is who He is, and He's always the same. And you know why we need Him in His life, in our life? Because He's the one that brings stability to us. He's the one that can take our sin black and heart, wash it with red blood, and make it whiter than snow. Come reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. I'll put a revival in your heart. And he said, I want you to have joy. And he said, not joy like the world gives. It changes, doesn't it? Jesus said, the world didn't give it to you. And they can't take it. How many of you have ever had somebody work real hard on your joy? Amen. Right? Just stay, stay with me here. We're going to make it to Psalms 85. He said, and forsake us so long time. How long will we accept being cold and indifferent? How long would we just rock along spiritually saying, I'm saved, I'm going to go to heaven. And not feel that fire and excitement and that freshness of the Lord that draws us to the house of God. 
that excites us to share the gospel and witness to somebody that doesn't know Jesus. How many of you know God will do his part, but there's a part we play? Come on. Amen. Amen. Draw nigh, and he will draw nigh. Draw away. What did, what did Jesus say about the Pharisees and Israel and the religious people? He said these people's mouth, their lips are close to me, but their heart is far from me. And friend, that's the problem with America today. Our heart is everywhere but God. You say, well, I know a lot of people that love God. I'm talking general state. I'm talking about where there has been revival. I'm talking about where there has been a move of God. I'm talking about a people who has known, but they've turned away. Right? I mean, does it make sense that that's going on today? And we've reaped, we've reaped the consequences of it too. Not a sure word from God. Amen. Not a fresh word from the Lord. That thing that would stir us. That thing that would so excite us. And notice after asking these questions what the prophet said. He's in the 21st verse. He said, God, turn now un, turn us unto thee. In other words, like we're on a stream. I set the bottle here and I'm a sovereign God and the prophet is saying, turn us, Lord, turn us. And he said, I've stood all day with my hands outstretched. Oh, Jerusalem, how oft I would have gathered you, but you would not. He said, you've stoned the preachers, you've killed the prophets, you've rejected the word of God, and now you would even be as so bold to say, turn us, God. How many of you know if he's the potter and we're the clay, he can do anything with you that he desires to do in his sovereignty? We sure don't want him cutting us off in his sovereignty. I want to say, oh God, forgive me, wash me, cleanse me. Lord, let me love the heart of Christ. Let me push into the Lord. Lord, let me know you freshness and in freshness. And you know what he's saying? He's saying, son, I'm here. But you've got some turning to do. Come on, saints of God. Somebody help me this morning. You have some choice to make in here. Now the prophet understood and, and he was, he, he, and he, he's not without fact here, but there's got to be a deep, deeper understanding. He said, Lord, if you'll just turn, if, if, we'll, if, if we'll turn and you'll turn us, oh Lord, we shall be turned. Hey, if the earth is God's footstool, he can kick it and do whatever he wants to. And saints, while he can do whatever he wants to in our life, I've brought a question today. Would you turn new and fresh to God? And you say, well, pastor, you act like the whole house is backslid. Well, I'll just give you a freebie. The whole house can take one more trip to an altar, including the preacher. Including, hey, there it is right with that excitement with that joy don't you want to serve God don't you want to know him in that excitement don't you want to know him in that fresh life don't you want to know him when that joy is just flowing out of your spirit and out of your vessel amen how many of you even remember today when you left one service and you couldn't wait for the night service? Amen. I'm not trying to set you up. So just bear with me. Where just that excitement and, 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 and that freshness just did something in your life. That's what I want to talk about this morning. And you know, he goes on to say, O Lord, and we shall be turned renew our days as of old. Brother Ed, this prophet knew something that he missed from a day of old. 
I can remember hearing people saying, oh, the Holy Spirit was so strong and so fresh in the church. It was almost like he opened our car doors when we made it into the lot. You know what I wish had happened today? If Dean and them are looking out the front door, I pray after this message today, singing the songs of Zion, we say, man, I hope y'all run out of here and they say, my God, what's happened over there this morning? Say, well, they got renewed and they got refreshed and they got out of here with high octane. <laughs> Somebody lit a fire under them. Right? Have you ever heard somebody say, I wish that boy would listen to me? Come on, saints. I feel tender about this. I've heard him say, I, I wish he'd just listen to me. How many of you have ever heard him say, they don't listen? I wonder how many times the heart of God aches for his saints. It isn't a downer. I would hope that there would be something to encourage us here. But I do wonder how many days that the Lord longs for us. He said that, he said that the cattle didn't even know their master. The very hand that fed them. And how many days that God would long and yearn. And he said, I waited all day long for you, and you never came. Thou hast utterly rejected us, thou art very wroth against us. How many of you know that the Father is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to life everlasting? Turn with me to Psalms 85. Would you do that? We're going to dig around here a little while this morning. And uh, if you'll just continue for a few minutes to keep your heart open and say, Lord, what are you saying to me? We're going to start at verse one, Brother Tommy. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. How many of you bear witness that God has been favorable to us? He's saying, God, you did it in the past. Lord, you blessed us in the past. Lord, you did great things. You took us through the Red Sea. You fed us with quail and the manna. God, you delivered us from Babylonian captivity. Lord, you delivered us from the hand of Egypt. God, you've done great and mighty things. And when all of the plagues fell on Egypt, God, you were favorable to us and you sustained us. How many of you know a day when you went to the house of God, people were being born again in the altars of the Lord? Or or you could call a revival. How many of you know a revival is more than just setting three days aside? There's got to be heart preparation. There's got to be word preparation. You can go through a three-day meeting and not know what revival is. Or we can remember the past. Oh, God, I remember when we went in there and the power of God was so strong and the blessings of the Lord and people were so excited to be in the house of God and you were so favorable and kind. Friend, God was doing something, but so were the people. As we turn to the heart of God, the heart of God comes close to us. I believe that's theologically sound. And this verse of scripture, and I might say to you again, Brother Chris, if God's ever done it, he can do it today. I feel sorry for people who would accept and believe a doctrine or a faith that God did it 100 years ago, but he just can't do it today. If he doesn't change. How many of you know if we won't, he doesn't. If we won't pray, he doesn't move. If we won't repent, he doesn't move. He told the churches of Asia, he said, repent quickly or I'm going to come in. I'm going to remove your candles. Stick from the house. He said, I'm going to put the light out the rest of the way. Won't even be a place to hold the candle. My God, that's heavy. You brought us back from the captivity of Jacob. Verse 2. Remembering, thou hast given. Can I ask you a personal question today? How have you benefited and how has God favored you? You might say, Pastor, I have children. Not born again. I have children. 
out there in, in the land. And you know what? I always am so glad to tell believers when you've raised your children and you've marked them by Christ, the Bible said when they're old, they'll not depart. And when you teach them where home base is, I believe that judicially, you don't have to agree with me, but I believe judicially our high priest when we go through Jesus Christ, if you have marked them, if you have touched them, if you've trained them in the ways of God, when we pray, how many of you know God has given every one of us a will? My old professor's in college again, and I'll tell you, as long as I have breath, if a man will not be saved, then he just will not be saved. But also it's true, if you will be, you will be and can be. He's not willing any should perish. He's not willing any lack good joy. He said that your joy might be full and complete. He's not willing that any not experience revival when he's ready to pour out all the abundant blessings that we've ever desired. And if he's ever done it one time, he can do it in 2020. Has there ever been a year that the world has been turned upside down and who could have imagined it or thought it? But our God who doesn't change is still able. And we can concentrate on more about what's going around us and we can lose sight of the very thing we need in God. Can somebody say amen? We can condemn the darkness all the while. We're not shining as brightly as we should shine. Some curse the darkness will get up and be the light. Huh? Yeah, we can, we, we can be all that God's called us to be. He said in the past, you've forgiven the iniquity of thy pe people. Look what else he said you've done in the past. Thou hast covered all their sin. Salah. Amen. How many of you are glad he's covered all of your sin? Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. What the Lord tell Jonah? He said, go tell him. Judgment's coming. It's going to fall. Jonah, get in there and preach some repentance. And Jonah paid his own ticket and his own fare to, Tars to Tarsus. You know what it said? He went down to Tarsus. Anytime you rebel against God, anytime we don't stay fresh in Him, we'll pay our own ticket to go downward. Amen? He went down to Tarsus. You know what his complaint to God was? He said, God, if I tell them and I preach repentance, uh, they'll repent. They'll get right with you and you won't kill them. And I've told them you're going to come kill them. I mean, you know, there's something wrong with that kind of thought. Hey, we don't want God to kill them. Friend, we want God to save America, don't we? Amen. Amen. We don't want to die as a people of God or as a church. Hey, do it again, God. The Bible said that if a tree is cut down in the book of Job, that there's hope if water touches the stump or the root of that tree, that it might what again? Bloom and shoot forth. How many of you has ever tried to cut that tree down beside your house and you get it about as close to the ground as you can and you went back out there the other day and they're just, it's a bush now. Because where the root is and where it's lived one more time, when the rain falls again, it could. Lighthouse Tabernacle, it can rain again. It will rain again as we pray and press into the heart of God. As we're willing to repent before God. As we're willing to press in and call on the name of the Lord and say, God, without you, God, we'll just always be trying to turn over. We'll always be trying to change, but it won't work. Because God, we need to turn, but then we need by your turning to help do in us what we can never do for ourselves. Oh, I feel the witness of his Holy Spirit. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation. I guess it'd be a great thing if we didn't have to do anything about it, just expected God to do everything. But saints, I would be a lying preacher to tell you it worked that way. And cause thine anger toward us to cease. And then rhetorically, will thou be angry with us forever? 
And I really think the prophet of God understood. No, God won't be angry. God, did, the Bible said he's angry with the wicked every day. But he also yearns over the heart of the wicked every day. When I felt God was calling me into the ministry. And I can take you. And, and there were different places. But if Little Rock Gates were still over on 96 going over towards Carthage. If you know 96 past Highway 43 and you keep heading on east on 96 and you come up the little hill, they built the Baptist church right on the top side of, of the hill there at 96. And when you go down that other hill and you would drive a bit, now there's new housings and a Dollar General store and not very far there on the next corner there's a school. But I was back in a hay meadow one day rescattering broken bales of hay, hating for my uncle. And my uncle owned all of that land right there back to the corner and, and deep land. And in summer I'd go over and work with him, Tom Smith. Bill, Uncle Bill Smith, him and his son helped build that Baptist church on the top of the hill. And I was back there praying early one morning. My uncle said, son, I want you to go out there and rescatter them bales of hay and so we can rebale. And I did that. And friend, I was out there praying and just a young boy and young man and weeping before God. And God was dealing with me. And, and I felt him speaking about the ministry and said, God, I'm, I, I'm, Preachers don't run in my family, even though there's one or two among us. And I said, God, I don't know how to do it. And I'm scared to death to even think about it. And if I ever had God speak to me, saints of God, just as sure as you're sitting there and I'm sitting here. And I said, God, I don't even have time to prepare. I don't know. I, I wouldn't even know what to do. And I, I can hear some of your thoughts. Hey, he's still struggling to find out, but that's okay. We're working on it at least. And the Lord spoke this to my spirit, Brother Ed, just as plain. I knew it was God. And you, how many of you like know what he said to me? He said, until the very day of my coming, I will be putting labors into my field. I wouldn't have thought that on my own. I, I wouldn't have conjured that up. But I mean in an instant. He said, the, till the very day of my coming, I will be calling people and laborers for my field. And I said, God, you, you open the door. You make the way, God, and I'll go. Friend, there's a commitment on our part that we have to do. Paul said, I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that commitment which I've made unto him against that day. Some want the benefit, some want the blessing, but they never want to make the commitment to Christ. Friend, if we want revival, we've got to commit to it. You know, it wouldn't hurt to push your plate back a day and say, Lord, I'd rather pray and miss a meal and hunger after righteousness because the Bible said, he that hungereth after righteousness shall be filled. He said, call upon me in the day that you seek me. You'll find me when you call upon me with all of your heart. Saints of God, how many of you know America needs a turn to the heart of God? How many of you know much of the church world? Friend, we don't have a political problem. We have a sin problem. Come on, somebody help me today. It's not a political problem. It's not your party, their party, my party, his party. Even though God particularly sees who people party affiliate themselves above the voice of God. Friend, it is a sin problem. Like I mentioned last Sunday, and I've only got about a month to do it. I have never stood in a pulpit of over 43 years of ministry. I started pastoring a month before my wife and I got married, started to work, got married. She joined me later, met in our Bible college days. We've given our life over that. I've never told anybody how to vote, never. We have provided voting and we've got, we're supposed to be getting our voting thing and it lists both sides of the fence and it lets you read it and make a decision. 
But I tell you, I feel so strong about the critical hour we're living in. I'll tell you what I won't vote for. I will not vote for an abortionist, and I will not vote for somebody who would destroy marriage and marriage being any other thing than God's plan, one man with one woman. I can't support it. Now, I, I'm just telling you, I, I, conscious before Christ, I, I, I just can't get there. My challenge to you would be you pray through and see what God needs you to do. And I'll tell you what America needs to do. We need to fall on our face and repent for the millions of babies that have been slaughtered and the blood that has fallen. We need to repent, do our first works over and find out if God had a plan for marriage and he does. My daughter is sitting in the house here been a delivery nurse how many years now sis 12 whatever it is and I guarantee you she can stand up in the house of God and in nurseries in nurseries when them babies come out how many of you have ever heard they slap you when you come in and they slap you before you go out amen and you know what they do they say what do we got it's a little boy now I'm not going to tell you how they know that <laughs> what they say we get it's a little girl you know there's no confusion with that among kids until they get up a little bit older and foolish people that have turned from the voice of God want to confuse them and bring disgrace in their life I'm telling you saints of God hey Fire me, send me down the road, but and 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 I and, and I'll tell you another one. I have never been the one that ha has played politics in the pulpit. I think all of my history will will prove that. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. They said no king but Caesar. Jesus ran headlong into politics. Do I have a witness in the house? Moses ran headlong into politics because he had to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Are you with me today? I can prove to you scripturally a, a story after story after story where, hey, friend, did you know this week or just a few days ago, how many of you has ever heard the town Moscow, Idaho? Moscow, Idaho. How many of you heard it in the news this week? I thought Moscow was in Russia. Well, let me tell you what happened in Moscow, Idaho this week. Now, there might be an argument whether it was over mask or over singing, but there was an open air meeting and there were people singing the songs of, of the church in an open air meeting and whether the guy didn't show the license or he did show the license, the point still being in Moscow, Idaho, there were people arrested in an open air meeting worshiping God. Friend, in all my life, I'd have never thought it in the United States of America. I'd have never dreamed it. But you know what the problem is? A spiritual problem. We need a revival. We need a renewal. We need a returning to God. We really do. I know that clock's running. Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? And the old classic verse, will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? And then I have to ask saints, will we be revived? Would we remember the joy of our first works? Would we return to God? Would we be excited? Would we pray through? Would we say, God, I want all that you have for me. Pour it out on me. God, I want all you have for me. If we would, that God would revive us. One of my favorite biblical stories is Samson, and so many of them are. Oh, what a heartbreak it is that he laid his head in the lap of Delilah one time too many. 
You compromise your vow. You compromise your standard. You compromise the word of God. And it'll put your lights out. It'll put your eyes out. Can I have somebody say amen? amen. Friend, if, if we don't ever stand for truth, we can just compromise ourselves right into hell if we want to. We can just compromise ourselves right out of the touch of God and revival if we want to. And the very sad thing that that anointing upon God, Samson would raise up and shake himself, right? And he'd carry the gates of the city or he'd take the jawbone of an ass and he'd kill a thousand Philistines. One man would do it with the anointing and touch of God. And the Bible said one day, uh, Samson rose up to shake himself and your Bible in the King James Version said he wist not or he didn't recognize it yet or he didn't know that he'd already lost the touch of the Spirit. Said he wist not that the Lord had departed. He thanked Man, I'll just get the same blessing I've ever had, but not do the same thing that brought the blessing. Come on now, church. But let me tell you what happened. When they had that old blind preacher working at the mill, do you see what a sad thing? What a disgrace that hell blinded him. They punched his eyes out, but they could never put that spiritual side out. Friend, America's lost her spiritual eyes for God. That's our problem. Come on, church. But if we'll pray, if we'll remember, if we'll do what Samson, I love this verse. Sister Courtney Clore, he prayed, and this is what he said. Well, first, the Bible said, how be it? Where was his vow? He wouldn't drink, drink strong drink. A razor never touch his head. He lived the righteous vow of a Nazarite. Jesus was Nazarite. Did you know? We don't have time to go there. Said, how be it? One of the most powerful verses of scripture. Something's coming back that had been cut off. How be it the hair begin to grow again? Friend, one day he noticed and he felt that lock of hair and it gave him hope. I pray God touch us that a hope would rise up in us that God doesn't change. And if he did it one time, he'll do it in 2020. He'll do it in Lighthouse. He'll do it where people repent. He'll do it where people turn to God. And he, how be it the hair begin to grow? And he said, God, he said, let me die with my enemies. He said, do it again, God. Do it again. And when that little boy led him over to the pillar and the post of the house, he said, son, take me to the pillar of the house. And friend, I just see it this way. When Samson leaned against that pillar to the glory of God, I believe that high and holy, sovereign touch of God, that anointing of God, just went down and coursed through his mortal body and the power of God. And do you know the Bible said that there were more of the enemies of God judged in that moment than all of his life and living before. We say, man, I've lost hope that America will ever repent. We still should pray and we still should be the light. We still should say, God, do it again. Brother Rob, come and help me. How many of you want a little hope that the preacher's going to quit? <laughs> Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord. How many of you know it's the mercy of God any of us are in this house today? How many of you know the touch of God is by his mercy? But you know what? You could never know his mercy. Brother Space, no one could ever know his mercy if somebody didn't tell him the truth. You know, the Bible said that mercy and truth has kissed. It takes heaven touching earth and earth reaching out to touch heaven. Did you know that's in this chapter? People want mercy. Just don't tell me the truth, preacher. He said, show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. He did that. Then he said, I will hear what the Lord will speak, for he shall speak. No one has to raise their hand. Can I ask you a personal question? 
I feel so tender about it. Brother Kevin, it makes me want to cry. I'm not too proud to cry and weep before God. When's the last time you hit the foot of that bed or you crawled in that closet and you said, God, I got to have a word for me. Not what pastor, not what the evangelist, not what somebody on TV said. When's the last time you got your own word? Be excited. Who would ever think the king of heaven would talk to you and me? And he does and he will. I don't play with it, but it's happened. Some say, preacher, you believe God can still speak to you today? Yeah, I can if we just take the time to listen. Some don't want to be corrected. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for a preacher. Never. My pastor stomped on my toes. Do I have a witness in the house? But there's people in this house that can tell you I was on the front or the second seat like this saying, come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. Amen, pastor. Give us the gospel. Let mercy and truth meet God. Preach something. Pastor, preach it. said, I will hear what the Lord has to say. Prayer isn't about you and I doing the talking. America quit listening. The backslidden church quit listening. He said, if you want to hear it, he said, remember and go do it over. We're going to get this thing right. I guarantee you I had John Gaddy tell this boy, hey, that ain't the way we do it. Brother Larry, and I've also had him tell me what part of no did you not understand? Do I have one witness in the house? How many of you has ever had to cut your own stick? How many of you has ever had him tell you this is going to hurt me worse than it hurts you? I said, well, just get after it. Do a little practice on yourself. You see, the friend will tell you the truth at all times I'd rather somebody tell me the truth as to say it behind my back I would have more respect for that verse come on wouldn't you God's a truth teller and if we would just quiet down I am closing saints you think what I've said if you just knew what I wanted to say we'd, it'd be a two o'clocker Mercy and truth. Mercy and truth. Will you be born again? Come and he'll give mercy. And you know why you can come? Because somebody told you the truth you needed to come. Wow. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I'll hear what the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not again turn to their folly. I'm right back where we started. Israel over and over again, Brother Gerald, God had blessed them. He'd deliver them from their idol gods and they would return to their folly. Go back and waller with the pigs one more time. You tried to help somebody. Maybe they were addicted. Over several years, I used to go and have them quote about the fifth or the sixth or the seventh step of the program. My God, I was street naive and they'd tell me stuff. I thought I wouldn't want to tell anybody that but God. But they were taught you got to be honest and you got to get it all out. And I would have never repeated it to no one. And I thought if they could tell me that, then they would want to be honest about doing something different. Surely his salvation is nigh unto them that fear him. America no longer fears God like she did. Much of the church world doesn't fear God like they did or they wouldn't change Bible doctrines and make them comfortable for men to live in their sin. How many of you love your pastor now? Oh God. Friend, I was with buddies that did dope. 
Brother David, they all begged me, come on, Daryl, come on, Daryl, come on, Daryl. But I was taught and trained in the gospel, and I had a fear even of my parents and my family. I feared God. I feared my parents. I feared I didn't have enough brain to waste on it. And somehow or another, even in sin, God kept me. It's a miracle of God. We think what he saved us from. I want to ask some of you, what has he kept you from? And what could he do for America again? And he'll keep us from destruction and judgment of fire if we would repent. Man, I feel this thing growing on me again. I want to take off again. I'm not going to do it. How many closings? Is this about five closings? The little boy said to his daddy, he said, Daddy, what's it mean when pastor looks at his watch? He said, not a thing. So, <laughs> How many of you love the word of God? Amen. How many of you want to live for Christ? How many of you want to make heaven your home? How many of you want to take somebody with you? How many of you at least would, hey, you can mix truth with mercy. You can have some grace for somebody that really doesn't have the training and understanding. Paul said, because I tell you the truth, have I made you my enemy? No, a truth teller is your best friend. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth will set you free. What's your need today? He said, if you fear him, he said, then that glory can dwell in the land. Stand with me all over the house. If we would fear him, glory could dwell in the land. Mercy and truth are met together. Mercy and truth have kissed. Heaven and earth is touched. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. And I don't know what that 11th verse tells you, but I'm going to tell you what it tells me. When we'll get honest enough to be truthful to God, verse 11. Can we see verse 11, brother? Teach me the way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I'm going to tell you when America is going to be helped. I'm not a smart aleck, but I know the word. And I want to tell you what any church that wants to be refreshed and renewed, I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen. Whether America has revival or not, you can have revival. Whether this church would have a revival or not, you can have revival. Anyone who will pay the price to get alone with God and speak truth. Say, God, I didn't mean to walk at a distance. God, I'm convicted. God, I'm convinced in my spirit that, God, I've not remained where I ought to be. Lord, forgive me. Lord, would you just forgive me? Lord, would you just wash me clean? Lord, would you have mercy? God, I want to be honest. We just quoted it the other night. Search me, O Lord, and know me. Try me and see whether there be any wicked way in me. And if there be any sin in me. Right? What was the emphasis? Take it. Let me depart. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. God, I pray for America. God, I pray for Lighthouse Tabernacle. God, most importantly, we pray for ourselves because, Lord, your truth, your word, your mercy must first come to our house before we can stand repentance for another house. And oh God, I ask that you touch everyone under the sound of my voice today. Let this word come fresh by your Holy Spirit. God, let it begin to stir. Lord, let it stir that fallow ground of our life. And God, deal with us as sons and daughters. Lord, those who have joined us by Facebook, 
Lord, that you would stir them up, God. Lord, that we would know you with a freshness and a renewed zeal, God. Help us be willing to repent of those areas that you would convict us of, Lord. And then ultimately to know that mercy and truth is met. And God, you've blessed our land again. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for your attentiveness, church. Those that have been with us on Facebook, go in the name of the Lord. Be blessed in his presence. Amen. For that wholeness and healing, Lord, just to show yourself strong on his behalf. God, now from this very moment, from this very hour, God, just we just give you praise that you'll just turn the corner on this. And God, you'll get the glory, Lord. You'll be praised for the divine touch of your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. God, in Jesus' name we ask it. And now, Lord, we stand on the Lord of God. Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join our heart with you, brother. And the word is Amen. Hey, the next day, it was actually this leg, the next day, my leg felt like it belonged in your body. I drove my 66 Pontiac Le Mans like this, three speed, like this, this foot, because it just, Oh, now what happened here? Did yours, uh, did you publish yours? Well, I lost it somewhere. So, anyway, we was thankful. Hey, this leaves the Lord to touch it. For some reason, this leg was not. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> I don't know how, how to get it off. Where is it? Yeah, I felt it. 
How do you get this off? You hit it down over here and then uh, where? There was an end. There was a, yeah, 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 hit that. And then it should give you one in front of that.